Rule 101. Proceedings for Hospitalization of Insane Persons. Section 1. Venue, Petition for Commitment. A petition for the commitment of a person to a hospital or other place for the insane may be filed with the court of first instance of the province where the person alleged to be insane is found. The petition shall be filed by the Director of Health in all cases where, in his opinion, such commitment is for the public welfare, or for the welfare of said person who, in his judgment, is insane and such person or the one having charge of him is opposed to his being taken to a hospital or other place for the insane. Section 2. Order for Hearing. If the petition filed is sufficient in form and substance, the court, by an order reciting the purpose of the petition, shall fix a date for the hearing thereof, and copy of such order shall be served on the person alleged to be insane, and to the one having charged him, or on such of his relatives residing in the province or city as the judge may deem proper. The court shall furthermore order the sheriff to produce the alleged insane person, if possible, on the date of the hearing. Section 3. Hearing and Judgment. Upon satisfactory proof, in open court on the date fixed in the order, that the commitment applied for is for the public welfare or for the welfare of the insane person, and that his relatives are unable for any reason to take proper custody and care of him, the court shall order his commitment to such hospital or other place for the insane as may be recommended by the Director of Health. The court shall make proper provisions for the custody of property or money belonging to the insane until a guardian be properly appointed. Section 4. Discharge of Insane. When, in the opinion of the Director of Health, the person ordered to be committed to a hospital or other place for the insane is temporarily or permanently cured, or may be released without danger he may file the proper petition with the court of first instance which ordered the commitment. Section 5. Assistance of Fiscal in the Proceeding. It shall be the duty of the provincial fiscal or in the city of Manila the fiscal of the city, to prepare the petition for the Director of Health and represent him in court in all proceedings arising under the provisions of this rule. Rule 102. Habeas Corpus. Section 1. To what habeas corpus extends? Except as otherwise expressly provided by law, the writ of habeas corpus shall extend to all cases of illegal confinement or detention by which any person is deprived of his liberty, or by which the rightful custody of any person is withheld from the person entitled thereto. Section 2. Who may grant the writ? The writ of habeas corpus may be granted by the Supreme Court, or any member thereof in the instances authorized by law, and if so granted it shall be enforceable anywhere in the Philippines, and may be made returnable before the court or any member thereof, or before a court of first instance, or any judge thereof for the hearing and decision on the merits. It may also be granted by a court of first instance, or a judge thereof, on any day and at any time, and returnable before himself, enforceable only within his judicial district. Section 3. Requisites of Application Therefore Application for the writ shall be by petition signed and verified either by the party for whose relief it is intended, or by some person on his behalf, and shall set forth a. that the person in whose behalf the application is made is imprisoned or restrained on his liberty. b. the officer or name of the person by whom he is so imprisoned or restrained, or, if both are unknown or uncertain, such officer or person may be described by an assumed appellation, and the person who is served with the writ shall be deemed the person intended. c. The place where he is so imprisoned or restrained, if known. d. A copy of the commitment or cause of detention of such person, if it can be procured without impairing the efficiency of the remedy, or, if the imprisonment or restraint is without any legal authority, such fact shall appear. Section 4. When writ not allowed or discharge authorized. If it appears that the person alleged to be restrained of his liberty is in the custody of an officer under process issued by a court or judge or by virtue of a judgment or order of a court of record, and that the court or judge had jurisdiction to issue the process, render the judgment, or make the order, the writ shall not be allowed, or if the jurisdiction appears after the writ is allowed, the person shall not be discharged by reason of any informality or defect in the process, judgment, or order. 
not shall anything in this rule be held to authorize the discharge of a person charged with or convicted of an offense in the Philippines, or of a person suffering imprisonment under lawful judgment. Section 5. When the writ must be granted and issued. A court or judge authorized to grant the writ must, when a petition therefore is presented and it appears that the writ ought to issue, grant the same forthwith, and immediately thereupon the clerk of the court shall issue the writ under the seal of the court, or in case of emergency, the judge may issue the writ under his own hand, and may depute any officer or person to serve it. Section 6. To whom writ directed, and what to require. In case of imprisonment or restraint by an officer, the writ shall be directed to him, and shall command him to have the body of the person restrained of his liberty before the court or judge designated in the writ at the time and place therein specified. In case of imprisonment or restraint by a person not an officer, the writ shall be directed to an officer, and shall command him to take and have the body of the person restrained of his liberty before the court or judge designated in the writ at the time and place therein specified, and to summon the person by whom he is restrained then and there to appear before said court or judge to show the cause of the imprisonment or restraint. Section 7. How Prisoner Designated and Writ Served the person to be produced should be designated in the writ by his name, if known, but if his name is not known he may be otherwise described or identified. The writ may be served in any province by the sheriff or other proper officer, or by a person deputed by the court or judge. Service of the writ shall be made by leaving the original with the person to whom it is directed and preserving a copy on which to make return or service. If that person cannot be found, or has not the prisoner in his custody, then the service shall be made on any other person having or exercising such custody. Section 8. How a writ executed and returned. The officer to whom the writ is directed shall convey the person so imprisoned or restrained, and named in the writ, before the judge allowing the writ, or in case of his absence or disability, before some other judge of the same court, on the day specified in the writ, unless, from sickness or infirmity of the person directed to be produced, such person cannot, without danger, be bought before the court or judge, and the officer shall make due return of the writ, together with the day and the cause of the caption and restraint of such person according to the command thereof. Section 9. Defect of Form. No writ of habeas corpus can be disobeyed for defect of form, if it sufficiently appears therefrom in whose custody or under whose restraint the party imprisoned or restrained is held and the court or judge before whom he is to be bought. Section 10. Contents of Return. When the person to be produced is imprisoned or restrained by an officer, the person who makes the return shall state therein, and in other cases the person in whose custody the prisoner is found shall state, in writing to the court or judge before whom the writ is returnable, plainly and unequivocably. a. Whether he has or has not the party in his custody or power, or under restraint. b. If he has the party in his custody or power, or under restraint, the authority and the true and whole cause thereof, set forth at large, with a copy of the writ, order execution, or other process, if any, upon which the party is held. c. If the party is in his custody or power or is restrained by him, and is not produced, particularly the nature and gravity of the sickness or infirmity of such party by reason of which he cannot, without danger, be bought before the court or judge. d. If he has had the party in his custody or power, or under restraint, and has transferred such custody or restraint to another. Particularly to whom, at what time, for what cause, and by what authority such transfer was made. Section 11. Return to be signed and sworn to. The return or statement shall be signed by the person who makes it, and shall also be sworn by him if the prisoner is not produced, and in all other cases unless the return is made and signed by a sworn public officer in his official capacity. Section 12. Hearing on return. Adjournments. When the writ is returned before one judge, at a time when the court is in session, he may forthwith adjourn the case into the court, there to be heard and determined. The court or judge before whom the writ is returned or adjourned must immediately proceed to hear and examine the return, 
and such other matters as are properly submitted for consideration, unless for good cause shown the hearing is adjourned, in which event the court or judge shall make such order for the safekeeping of the person imprisoned or restrained as the nature of the case requires. If the person imprisoned or restrained is not produced because of his alleged sickness or infirmity, the court or judge must be satisfied that it is so grave that such person cannot be produced without danger, before proceeding to hear and dispose of the matter. On the hearing the court or judge shall disregard matters of form and technicalities in respect to any warrant or order of commitment of a court or officer authorized to commit by law. Section 13. When the return evidence, and when only a plea. If it appears that the prisoner is in custody under a warrant of commitment in pursuance of law, the return shall be considered prima facie evidence of the cause of restraint, but if he is restrained of his liberty by any alleged private authority, the return shall be considered only as a plea of the facts therein set forth, and the party claiming the custody must prove such facts. Section 14. When person lawfully imprisoned recommitted, and when led to bail. If it appears that the prisoner was lawfully committed, and is plainly and specifically charged in the warrant of commitment with an offense punishable by death, he shall not be released, discharged, or bailed. If he is lawfully imprisoned or restrained on a charge of having committed an offense not so punishable, he may be recommitted to imprisonment or admitted to bail in the discretion of the court or judge. If he be admitted to bail, he shall forthwith file a bond in such sum as the court or judge deems reasonable, considering the circumstances of the prisoner and the nature of the offense charged, conditioned for his appearance before the court where the offense is properly cognizable to abide its order of judgment, and the court or judge shall certify the proceedings, together with the bond, forthwith to the proper court. If such bond is not so filed, the prisoner shall be recommitted to confinement. Section 15. When prisoner discharged if no appeal. When the court or judge has examined into the cause of caption and restraint of the prisoner, and is satisfied that he is unlawfully imprisoned or restrained, he shall forthwith order his discharge from confinement, but such discharge shall not be effective until a copy of the order has been served on the officer or person detaining the prisoner. If the officer or person detaining the prisoner does not desire to appeal, the prisoner shall be forthwith released. Section 16. Penalty for refusing to issue writ, or for disobeying the same. A clerk of a court who refuses to issue the writ after allowance thereof and demand therefor, or a person to whom a writ is directed, who neglects, or refuses to obey or make return of the same according to the command thereof, or makes false return thereof, or who, upon demand made by or on behalf of the prisoner, refuses to deliver to the person demanding, within six, six, hours after the demand therefore, a true copy of the warrant or order of commitment, shall forfeit to the party aggrieved. The sum of one thousand pesos, to be recorded in a proper action, and may also be punished by the court or judge as for contempt. Section 17. Person discharged not to be again imprisoned. A person who is set at liberty upon a writ of habeas corpus shall not be again imprisoned for the same offense unless by the lawful order or process of a court having jurisdiction of the cause or offense, and a person who knowingly, contrary to the provisions of this rule, recommits or imprisons, or causes to be committed or imprisoned, for the same offense, or pretended offense, any person so set at liberty, or knowingly aids or assists therein, shall forfeit to the party aggrieved the sum of 1,000 pesos, to be recovered in a proper action, notwithstanding any colorable pretense or variation in the warrant of commitment, and may also be punished by the court or judge granting the writ as for contempt. Section 18 when prisoner may be removed from one custody to another. A person committed to prison, or in custody of an officer, for any criminal matter, shall not be removed therefrom into the custody of another unless by legal process, or the prisoner be delivered to an inferior officer to carry to jail, or, by order of the proper court or judge, be removed from one place to another within the Philippines for trial or in case of fire epidemic, insurrection, or other necessity or public calamity, and a person who, after such commitment, makes signs, or countersigns any order for such removal contrary to this section, 
shall forfeit to the party aggrieved the sum of 1,000 pesos, to be recovered in a proper action. Section 19. Record of writ, fees, and costs. The proceedings upon a writ of habeas corpus shall be recorded by the clerk of the court, and upon the final disposition of such proceedings the court or judge shall make such order as to costs as the case requires. The fees of officers and witnesses shall be included in the costs taxed, but no officer or person shall have the right to demand payment in advance of any fees to which he is entitled by virtue of the proceedings. When a person confined under color of proceedings in a criminal case is discharged, the costs shall be taxed against the Republic of the Philippines, and paid out of its treasury, when a person in custody by virtue or under color of proceedings in a civil case is discharged, the costs shall be taxed against him, or against the person who signed the application for the writ, or both, as the court shall direct. Rule 103. Change of Name. Section 1. Venue. A person desiring to change his name shall present the petition to the court of first instance of the province in which he resides, or, in the city of Manila, to the Juvenile and Domestic Relations Court. Section 2. Contents of Petition. A petition for change of name shall be signed and verified by the person desiring his name changed, or some other person on his behalf, and shall set forth. A that the petitioner has been a bona fide resident of the province where the petition is filed for at least three, three, years prior to the date of such filing. b. The cause for which the change of the petitioner's name is sought. c. The name asked for. Section 3. Order for hearing. If the petition filed is sufficient in form and substance, the court, by an order reciting the purpose of the petition, shall fix a date and place for the hearing thereof, and shall direct that a copy of the order be published before the hearing at least once a week for three, three, successive weeks in some newspaper of general circulation published in the province, as the court shall deem best. The date set for the hearing shall not be within thirty, thirty, days prior to an election nor within four, four, month after the last publication of the notice. Section 4. Hearing. Any interested person may appear at the hearing and oppose the petition. The Solicitor General or the proper provincial or city fiscal shall appear on behalf of the Government of the Republic. Section 5. Judgment. Upon satisfactory proof in open court on the date fixed in the order that such order has been published as directed and that the allegations of the petition are true, the court shall, if proper and reasonable cause appears for changing the name of the petitioner, a judge that such name be changed in accordance with the prayer of the petition. Section 6. Service of Judgment. Judgments or orders rendered in connection with this rule shall be furnished the civil registrar of the municipality or city where the court issuing the same is situated, who shall forthwith enter the same in the civil register. Rule 104. Voluntary Dissolution of Corporations. Section 1. Where by whom and on what showing application made. A petition for dissolution of a corporation shall be filed in the court of first instance of the province where the principal office of a corporation is situated. The petition shall be signed by a majority of its board of directors or other officers having the management of its affairs, verified by its president or secretary or one of its directors, and shall set forth all claims and demands against it and that its dissolution was resolved upon by a majority of the members, or, if a stock corporation, by the affirmative vote of the stockholders holding and representing two-thirds of all shares of stock issued or subscribed, at a meeting of its members, or stockholders called for that purpose. Section 2. Order thereupon for filing objections. If the petition is sufficient in form and substance, the court by an order reciting the purpose of the petition, shall fix a date on or before which objections thereto may be filed by any person, which date shall not be less than 30, 30, nor more than 60, 60, days after the entry of the order. Before such date a copy of the order shall be published at least once a week for four, four, successive weeks in some newspaper of general circulation published in the municipality or city where the principal office of the corporation is situated, or, if there be no such newspaper, 
then in some newspaper of general circulation in the Philippines, and a similar copy shall be posted for four, four, weeks in three public places in such municipality or city. Section 3. Hearing, Dissolution, and Disposition of Assets. Receiver. Upon five, five, days notice given after the date on which the right to file objections as fixed in the order expired, the court shall proceed to hear the petition and try any issue made by objections filed, and if no such objection is sufficient, and the material allegations of the petition are true, it shall render judgment dissolving the corporation and directing such disposition of its assets as justice requires, and may appoint a receiver to collect such assets and pay the debts of the corporation. Section 4. What shall constitute record? The petition, orders, proof of publication and posting, objections filed, declaration of dissolution, and any evidence taken, shall constitute the record in the case. Rule 105. Judicial approval of voluntary recognition of minor natural children. Section 1. Venue. Where judicial approval of a voluntary recognition of a minor natural child is required, such child or his parents shall obtain the same by filing a petition to that effect with the court of first instance of the province in which the child resides. In the city of Manila, the petition shall be filed in the Juvenile and Domestic Relations Court. Section 2. Contents of Petition. The petition for judicial approval of a voluntary recognition of a minor natural child shall contain the following allegations. a. The jurisdictional facts. b. The names and residences of the parents who acknowledged the child, or of either of them, and their compulsory heirs, and the person or persons with whom the child lives. c. The fact that the recognition made by the parent or parents took place in a statement before a court of record or in an authentic writing, copy of the statement or writing being attached to the petition. Section 3. Order for Hearing. Upon the filing of the petition, the court, by an order reciting the purpose of the same, shall fix the date and place for the hearing thereof, which date shall not be more than six, six, months after the entry of the order, and shall, moreover, cause a copy of the order to be served personally or by mail upon the interested parties, and published once a week for three, three, consecutive weeks, in a newspaper or newspaper of general circulation in the province. Section 4. Opposition. Any interested party must, within 15, 15, days from the service, or from the last date of publication, of the order referred to in the next preceding section, file his opposition to the petition, stating the grounds or reasons therefore. Section 5. Judgment. If, from the evidence presented during the hearing, the court is satisfied that the recognition of the minor natural child was willingly and voluntarily made by he parent or parents concerned, and that the recognition is for the best interest of the child, it shall render judgment granting judicial approval of such recognition. Section 6. Service of Judgment Upon Civil Registrar. A copy of the judgment rendered in accordance with the preceding section shall be served upon the civil registrar whose duty it shall be to enter the same in the register. Rule 106. Constitution of Family Home. Section 1. Who may constitute? The head of a family owning a house and the land on which it is situated may constitute the same into a family home by filing a verified petition to that effect with the court of first instance of the province or city where the property is located. In the city of Manila, the petition shall be filed in the Juvenile and Domestic Relations Court. When there is danger that a person obliged to give support may lose his or her fortune because of grave mismanagement or on account of riotous living, his or her spouse, if any, and a majority of those entitled to be supported by him or by her may petition the court of first instance for the creation of the family home. Section 2. Contents of Petition. The petition shall contain the following particulars. a. Description of the property. b. An estimate of its actual value. c. A statement that the petitioner is actually residing in the premises. d. The encumbrances thereon. E. 
the names and addresses of all the creditors of the petitioner or head of the family and of all mortgages and other persons who have an interest in the property. f. The names of all the beneficiaries of the family home. Section 3. Notice and Publication. The court shall notify the creditors, mortgagees, and all other persons who have an interest in the estate, of the filing of the petition, causing copies thereof to be served upon them, and published once a week for three, three, consecutive weeks in a newspaper of general circulation. The petition shall, moreover, be caused to be posted in a conspicuous place in the parcel of land mentioned therein, and also in a conspicuous place of the municipal building of the municipality or city in which the land is situated, for at least 14, 14, days prior to the day of the hearing. Section 4. Objection and Date of Hearing. In the notice and publication required in the preceding section, the court shall require the interested parties to file their objection to the petition within a period of not less than 30, 30, days from receipt of notice or from the date of last publication, and shall fix the date and time of the hearing of the petition. Section 5. Order. After hearing, if the court finds that the actual value of the proposed family home does not exceed 20,000 pesos, or 30,000 pesos in chartered cities, and that no third person is prejudiced thereby, or that creditors have given sufficient security for their credits, the petition shall be approved. Section 6. Registration of Order. A certified copy of the order of the court approving the establishment of the family home shall be furnished the register of deeds who shall record the same in the registry of property. Rule 107. Absentees. Section 1. Appointment of Representative. When a person disappears from his domicile, his whereabouts being unknown, and without having left an agent to administer his property, or the power conferred upon the agent has expired, any interested party, relative, or friend may petition the court of first instance of the place where the absentee resided before his disappearance, for the appointment of a person to represent him provisionally in all that may be necessary. In the city of Manila, the petition shall be filed in the Juvenile and Domestic Relations Court. Section 2. Declaration of Absence who may petition. After the lapse of two, two, years from his disappearance and without any news about the absentee or since the receipt of the last news, or of five, five, years in case the absentee has left a person in charge of the administration of his property, the declaration of his absence and appointment of a trustee or administrative may be applied for by any of the following. a. The spouse present. b. The heirs instituted in a will who may present an authentic copy of the same. c. The relatives who would succeed by the law of intestacy, and d. Those who have over the property of the absentee some right subordinated to the condition of his death. Section 3. Contents of Petition. The petition for the appointment of a representative, or for the declaration of absence and the appointment of a trustee or an administrator, must show the following. a the jurisdictional facts. b. The names, ages, and residences of the heirs instituted in the will, copy of which shall be presented, and of the relatives who would succeed by the law of intestacy. c. The names and residences of creditors and others who may have any adverse interest over the property of the absentee. d. The probable value, location, and character of the property belonging to the absentee. Section 4. Time of hearing, notice and publication thereof. When a petition for the appointment of a representative, or for the declaration of absence and the appointment of a trustee or administrator, is filed, the court shall fix a date and place for the hearing thereof where all concerned may appear to contest the petition. Copies of the notice of the time and place fixed for the hearing shall be served upon the known heirs, legatees, devisees, creditors, and other interested persons, at least 10, 10, days before the day of the hearing, and shall be published once a week for three, three, consecutive weeks prior to the time designated for the hearing, in a newspaper of general circulation in the province or city where the absentee resides, as the court shall deem best. Section 5. Opposition. 
anyone appearing to contest the petition shall state in writing his grounds therefore, and serve a copy thereof on the petitioner and other interested parties on or before the date designated for the hearing. Section 6. Proof at Hearing, Order. At the hearing, compliance with the provisions of Section 4 of this rule must first be shown. Upon satisfactory proof of the allegations in the petition, the court shall issue an order granting the same and appointing the representative, trustee, or administrator for the absentee. The judge shall take the necessary measures to safeguard the rights and interests of the absentee and shall specify the powers, obligations, and remuneration of his representative, trustee or administrator, regulating them by the rules concerning guardians. In case of declaration of absence, the same shall not take effect until 6, 6, months after its publication in a newspaper of general circulation designated by the court and in the official gazette. Section 7 who may be appointed. In the appointment of a representative, the spouse present shall be preferred when there is no legal separation. If the absentee left no spouse, or if the spouse present is a minor or otherwise incompetent, any competent person may be appointed by the court. In case of declaration of absence, the trustee or administrator of the absentee's property shall be appointed in accordance with the preceding paragraph. Section 8. Termination of Administration The trusteeship or administration of the property of the absentee shall cease upon order of the court in any of the following cases. a. When the absentee appears personally or by means of an agent. b. When the death of the absentee is proved and his testate or intestate heirs appear. c. When a third person appears, showing by a proper document that he has acquired the absentee's property by purchase or other title. In these cases the trustee or administrator shall cease in the performance of his office, and the property shall be placed at the disposal of whose may have a right thereto. Rule 108. Cancellation or Correction of Entries in the Civil Registry. Section 1. Who may file petition? Any person interested in any act, event, order, or decree concerning the civil status of persons which has been recorded in the civil register, may file a verified petition for the cancellation or correction of any entry relating thereto, with the court of first instance of the province where the corresponding civil registry is located. Section 2. Entries subject to cancellation or correction. Upon good and valid grounds, the following entries in the civil register may be cancelled or corrected, a. Births, b. Marriage, c. Deaths, d. Legal separations, e. Judgments of annulments of marriage, f. Judgments declaring marriages void from the beginning, g. Legitimations, h. Adoptions, i. Acknowledgements of natural children, j. Naturalization, k. Election, loss, or recovery of citizenship, l. Civil interdiction, m. Judicial determination of filiation, n. Voluntary emancipation of a minor, and o. Changes of name. Section 3. Parties. When cancellation or correction of an entry in the civil register is sought, the civil registrar and all persons who have or claim any interest which would be affected thereby shall be made parties to the proceeding. Section 4. Notice and publication. Upon the filing of the petition, the court shall, by an order, fix the time and place for the hearing of the same, and cause reasonable notice thereof to be given to the persons named in the petition. The court shall also cause the order to be published once a week for three, three, consecutive weeks in a newspaper of general circulation in the province. Section 5. Opposition. The civil registrar and any person having or claiming any interest under the entry whose cancellation or correction is sought may, within 15, 15, days from notice of the petition, or from the last date of publication of such notice, file his opposition thereto. Section 6. Expediting Proceedings. The court in which the proceeding is brought may make orders expediting the proceedings, and may also grant preliminary injunction for the preservation of the rights of the parties pending such proceedings. Section 7. Order. After hearing, 
the court may either dismiss the petition or issue an order granting the cancellation or correction prayed for. In either case, a certified copy of the judgment shall be served upon the civil registrar concerned who shall annotate the same in his record. Rule 109. Appeals in Special Proceedings. Section 1. Orders or judgments from which appeals may be taken. An interested person may appeal in special proceedings from an order or judgment rendered by a court of first instance or a juvenile and domestic relations court, where such order or judgment a. allows or disallows a will, b. determines who are the lawful heirs of a deceased person, or the distributive share of the estate to which such person is entitled, c. allows or disallows, in whole or in part, any claim against the estate of a deceased person, or any claim presented on behalf of the estate in offset to a claim against it. d. Settles the account of an executor, administrator, trustee, or guardian. e. Constitutes, in proceedings relating to the settlement of the estate of a deceased person, or the administration of a trustee or guardian, a final determination in the lower court of the rights of the party appealing, except that no appeal shall be allowed from the appointment of a special administrator, and f. is the final order or judgment rendered in the case, and affects the substantial rights of the person appealing unless it be an order granting or denying a motion for a new trial or for reconsideration. Section 2. Advanced Distribution in Special Proceedings Notwithstanding a pending controversy or appeal in proceedings to settle the estate of a decedent, the court may, in its discretion and upon such terms as it may deem proper and just, permit that such part of the estate may not be affected by the controversy or appeal be distributed among the heirs or legatees, upon compliance with the conditions set forth in Rule 90 of this Rules.